Hello, my name's Connie and I go to the Anthony Gel School in Worksworth. We are surrounded by hills here and these hills have a great story to tell, as my friends and I have been discovering. For thousands of years, our hills, and many like them across the Peak District, have been mined for lead, and you don't have to go underground to start looking for clues. A close look at some hillsides will show what look like tracks, but are probably caused by old mine shafts below. Some of these mines stretch for miles underground, but of course there has to be an entrance somewhere. The miners brought out lead ore. In order to extract the lead, it needed to be crushed by giant wheels. Chimneys can still be seen where giant fires used to purify the lead ore. The last working mine closed over 50 years ago, so all vertical mine shafts have had to be built over to stop people falling in. Obviously, it is impossible to travel back in time to see how things were done 200 years ago, but the next best thing is Brian Woodall. His talks have helped school children across Derbyshire to appreciate what life was like down a mine. This is all we'd be using, this is all the clothes that we'd be wearing 200 years ago to go underground, to go mining. 200 years ago, all we wanted was that stuff, the lead. Interviewing people outside our school confirmed that lead mining was an important part of our town's heritage. Hello, we're students from Anthony Gell School and we're here to find out about lead mining. Is there anything that you can tell us about lead mining? Oh. Go on. Well, I... I'm aware that Worksworth was a very important centre of lead mining and it was a very wealthy town at one stage. They uh, made quite a lot of money out of it a long time ago. Uh, and there was a lot of lead that was mined all over the area around here. Uh, it was a very important and ver very valuable commodity. It was important in the Roman times that the Romans came and that was when Worksworth first developed its prosperity through wealth. Somebody once described Bow Hill to me as being like a Swiss cheese because there are so many holes under it because of all the different mines. It had a second patch of um, prosperous activity in the medieval times and then maybe ran out in the Victorian era. And we know about the town man, don't we? The stone carving oh, yeah. from medieval times in the church. This carving is called the town man. It was originally in the church in Bonsall but it was moved to Worksworth and it shows a lead miner with his pickaxe. And you can go in a lead mine. Yeah. Yeah, and there's the, also down at the pavilion in Matlock Bath, they'll tell you about the lead mines there. And there's all sorts. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. A few miles away from our school is the Peak District Mining Museum. The success of many mines depends a great deal on the skill of the miner. Lead is an important metal. This in the use after iron, copper, zinc and aluminium and it is highly recyclable. The exhibits here not only show what lead was used for but also point out how dangerous it is. Yeah, well they've been using lead in this country since Roman times at least. The Romans used to use it for water piping and building things. Then it's sort of been used through the medieval periods for lead coffins roof in castle building, church roofs, things like that. Queen Elizabeth, she had, she used to use lead makeup, you know the white makeup oh, she yeah. used to wear that had lead in it, because you can, you can make white lead, which is a bit different and it's a bit poisonous, a bit nasty that. We don't want lead much, any, not too much anymore, because we know that lead is not very good for our health. So we're doing away with lead in water pipe, we're doing away with lead in petrol as fast as we can. You can see this lady here, she was working at one of the light white lead works in Sheffield. So they used to make white lead to use in paint, but producing white lead is really very poisonous, so the women who were working in these factories were only living for a few months after work, starting work there, so it um, wasn't a very nice job to have really. Next door to the museum is an old mine you can go down with a museum guide. It's quite low up here, so... Yep. That's 
the remains of an ancient lead mine, so it's about 200 years old, or at least 200 years old, that's been made with hand tools rather than exposing, so picks and uh, chisels and things. This is the sort of kit that we got it out with. Right. I'll, I'll bring the stuff down. This is the most important. This is the slitting pick. We're in working quite tight places with that. How much distance do you think you'd make in a day? Two inches! There are dozens of disused mines around our school. Pat Bell took me and some of my school friends down one to give us an idea of what life down there would have been like. We're going to somewhere called Devonshire Mine. Um, it's an old lead mine and we're going to just have a look around and see what it's like for you to experience, have an underground experience. And pink. Can you just get down, down the slope? Down the slope. Down, the slope. down that way, Connie. Down the slope. Down the slope. It's very wet. It's small. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be very hard to get through because it looks tiny. So we're going down here and we turn right and it's a bit narrow. And when they first started coming down here, you know, in the, a long time ago, 200 years ago, they wouldn't have electric lights. So what do you think they'd use to and light the way? Candles. candles. And, can and candles were quite expensive. So they would either come in completely in the dark or they would share one candle once they got into the working area and they would work in here in the winter and they would, they would come in probably before it got light in the morning and leave after it had gone dark at night and ch children or young people of your age would be working down the mines it wouldn't be great for your longevity would it? Now some of our mines are only so narrow that only perhaps a very small person can get through them and that's because you're following a horrible string of lead This pile of stones, you can see are quite regular aren't they, it's like a dry stone wall and that's rock that didn't contain anything useful. And rather than cart it out of the mine, they just used to put it in a pile like that. And they call it dead. The rock was dead, so that's called a pile it's called deads. So when people call, talk about deads in a cave, it's not dead miners. It's just rock they don't want. Sometimes there wasn't room on the floor for these unwanted rocks, but they had to go somewhere. So we would crush this stuff down. And all the waste, all the rubbish, we would stack on wooden beams above our heads. So it's not worth taking waste outside. Well, what are they? There's initials TM. Now, how do you think they carved the initials in up there? This was higher. The floor was higher. So at one point, whoever it was who carved his initials in up there was probably, I'm guessing, laying on his back. So if you look on the floor, there's lots of pieces of white crystal. Let me know what they are. Quartz. They're not quartz, no. Anybody know, did anybody know how lead gets into mines? All this limestone was laid down in flat beds. But then, 280 million years ago, these beds slowly rose, made a dome. And the land surface cracked from east to west in a big series of cracks. And these cracks run for miles east to west. They're hundreds of feet deep, and that's only a few yards wide in places. But they were filled, these cracks were slowly filled from deep within the earth by all these minerals. And then when you get these hot liquids getting pushed up from underneath, it forms, or it fills the holes in, and it forms veins or lines of lead. Inside these big cracks, you get a layer of fluor spar, calcium fluoride, a, la a vertical layer of varieties, barium sulfate, and and perhaps a smaller layer of lead sulphide. To help avoid the risk of collapse, miners sometimes left pillars when they were digging or built them up out of waste rock. It was a very, very, very hard life. I mean, you can imagine mining in very small areas, dark, cold, wet, dangerous, uh, using explosives and so on. So um, I know there were quite a lot of accidents and in some cases deaths. I mean it was a it was a hard life. And lead mining was very dangerous. Lead got onto their stomachs yes. and I know one thing they took to try and help that they drank milk 
um, which meant they perhaps didn't die quite so quickly, but it was a short life and a hard one, if you were a lead miner. You smell the air in here, does it smell fresh or not fresh? Fresh. fresh. There's a, a, air's passing through this section of the mine. And if you look at the ceiling, obviously there's a big hole there, isn't there? And those holes, some of them will go up to the surface to allow air to circulate. A little bit further up is another one. I, for one, was pleased about the fresh air down there, and even more pleased for it when I got out. <laughs> Freedom! There's an expression that says, as old as the hills. I think my friends and I here in Worksworth now have a much better idea of what that actually means.